Hey, welcome, folks. Uh, another episode of The Exponential Files. This show is about EXP agents and the great things that we do. Each week, we bring you a subject matter expert, my host, Jim Lowenstern, and myself, Larry Lawfer. Today, we have from Fort Lauderdale and from Los Angeles, we've got Heather Brooks, and she's going to discuss with us one of the fastest growing demographics in all of real estate. Welcome to the show, Heather. Well, I thank you very much. Um, I am with the EXP Seniors Network, so I I encourage people to join our network um, that we deal with the long-term homeowners um, across the nation. So I'm glad to be here. Thank you very much for having me. So Heather, is that group uh, something you need a certification for? Or is it just within EXP on so, workplace? Uh, describe. Well, thank you uh, for, for asking, Jim. Um, so the XP Seniors Network is actually only in workplace. Um, it's a group that is approved by One EXP. So it is an affinity group, which has a green little mark next to it. Um, the group is any age. It just deals with the older homeowner. So we work on where to find the older homeowner, how to deal with an older homeowner. And we're talking, when I say older homeowners, Typically, people that have owned their homes 40, 50, 60 years, or people that are over the age of 60 that we work with. And you got to think more, you know, along those 55 communities and all the other things that come with the senior home ownership. So that's what we really focus on. And we bring a lot of programs to um, the seniors network. And you mentioned this green check. It reminds me of. Elon Musk and Twitter, you have to pay <laughs> right. for the green check. Uh, what, so EX, our company has affinity groups. These affinity groups are groups that are approved by our board to be a forward-facing group, meaning they do positive um, encouragement. They teach things within it. And we have, you know, EXP Latino. We've got, um, a, we've got a lot of groups, um, a women's group empowerment groups, a group for everybody. But if you see the green check mark, it does mean that it is a company group. Um, so we do sit on the, our company boards. We do get a, a part in what's happening within our company. So it's great. I encourage people to join groups, be a part of the group and be a part of our company because that's what helps us grow. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to join right after the meeting. Um, what do we get uh, for joining? amazing education <laughs> so for instance last week i partnered up with mutual of omaha which is the most trusted loan um heckam loan specialist in our nation if you look at anybody that's taking on heckam loan, typically they look at mutual of omaha and then they'll look at somebody else the mutual of omaha has this new home loan out called the lifestyle loan and they are certifying real estate agents in this home loan. That certification has not been available to any brokerage other than our brokerage. So the, for the first time last week, I had the head of, her name is Anne Marie Stenman. She came in to EXP and taught the certification class for us and certified all of us by Mutual of Omaha, which gives us extra leverage to go out there and to work with our clients and helping them attain Heckam loans for a new purchase. So it's great. Gave us some great tools to help with our sales pitch, or to help, you know, engage and network seniors within, you know, within the community. We had such, we had such a huge audience. We had almost 300 um, agents, EXP agents only that took this course that I've had people ask for the course again, and we're doing it again on May 16th at 2 p.m. Pacific time. Um, mm -hmm. But all of that stuff is in the group. Um, if, so when they join, they can get all that information. Um, What's a Heckam loan? You, a Heckam loan is a reverse mortgage. Um, okay. And it's where you take the equity, but this is different. This is a reverse mortgage for purchase. So you're taking a small portion of the home that you're selling and that you have so much equity in and you're putting it into a brand new home and still having the reverse mortgage, but on a brand new home, you don't have to stay in the home you've had for 60 years. And 
it's great for people who have a lot of deferred maintenance and can't upkeep on a, such a big home. Rather than taking a heckum out on it, you can sell the home and then do a reverse, like do a heckum for purchase and buy a new home and then take the heckum out as you buy it. So it's a really um, great option. Or well, I've never heard a good know. story with a reverse mortgage. <laughs> I never have either. Why would well, anybody want to do something like that? Yeah. They're now backed by HUD. So you are, it, what happened then is not going to happen again. Uh, but I suggest you take this class because the heads of Mutual of Omaha are teaching the class. So they won't answer all those questions for you. I'm not a loan specialist. I just know this is something that they are, this lifestyle loan is something that they're um, rolling out to real estate agents across the country. We just happen to have been the first brokerage to offer it. Yeah. I've so just that's just one. People losing their yeah. homes with reverse yeah. mortgages. Right. Out, out, out yeah. living, outliving yeah. the loan and losing right. the home, losing their, yeah. you know, yeah. at the worst I, right the when time. they can't afford to, you right. know, yeah. Be right. homeless at 90. Right. Yeah. At the worst I, possible I, time. I, yes, I, I hear those stories all the time. I just bring in the experts to educate our agents. Um, but, and but you're I guaranteeing show... this will never happen again, Heather, right? Oh, no, no, no. I'm just saying it is backed by HUD. And that's what they say is that this isn't something that will happen again. And the government won't do anything that will hurt you ever. <laughs> I'm not getting myself into it. I just know this is what they say as the mutual of home Omaha experts. And I'm just putting out there the education that they give us. I am other than that. I just spew the education. No, but um, I do read that, you know, uh, seniors is the, well, baby, baby boomers, whatever, uh, mm -hmm. biggest, um, uh, component of sales and purchases yeah. in real estate right now. Yeah. And, you know, uh, you've got to also look at it in a statistic stance, uh, um, like way. And what I mean by that is you have 10,000 people every day turning 65. That's roughly one person every eight seconds that's turning 65. So it's a pretty big number. And then we've got Oh, oh, double this mountain centenarians in the last 10 years that are living. So when you're, when you're having to work much longer, it's hard. I mean, it's, you know, it becomes difficult as we're aging to, it's uh, called the longevity revolution. Um, right. And it's a, right. affordability is a big thing. So the well, well, the interesting mortgage, thing is this company EXP sort of plays into that also with their revenue share and their growth mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and right. does the senior group ever touch on that at all um no we okay. have not it's a good thing now i haven't even we haven't even done it i've been with the xp seniors hour for about five years now um i bring in education i teach our agents where to find the senior demographics how to market to them um, I, I, you know, newsletters, marketing material, um, how to go through a deal and, and handholds and stuff. But so where, where do we you find seniors, uh, early bird special? <laughs> no, actually. Early. Yeah. Four o'clock. <laughs> four o'clock. Actually, um, there is. Especially so in many... Florida. I live in Florida. <laughs> There's a lot of, um, great, you know, uh, um, uh, stuff on the internet that you can find mailbox power is one of the hugest things I do a lot on mailbox power, but you can really hone down the demographics. Don't buy, you don't need to buy a sheet. You know, you don't need to buy names. Like I can, it's really easy. It's you go into mailbox power, you can dumb it down to where you want. I pick 50 plus years that have owned their homes. I've, you know, put in, I want them to have, you know, this much, um, you know, in their, um, you know, like into their house. I want to know that it's a two level, you know, two stories versus a one story. Um, Why is that? Oh, because they well, can't do the stairs. Well, yes, in part, but this is where the caps comes in. So currently right now, uh, less than 10% of our nation's housing units can actually accommodate somebody with a mobility issue. That's a walker or a wheelchair. But if 
Jim, Larry, and his, uh, myself, like, as we get older or our parents are living longer, somebody is going to need a walker or a wheelchair. But if only 10% of the nation's housing units can accommodate it, what are we going to do? When I say accommodate, there's a couple of things that you need to accommodate. You can't have stairs going into a house. And most of us have stairs going into a house or stairs in our house. How about a full bathroom and a bedroom on the first floor? So that's another one. And the other one is, is grab bars and in, uh, you know, in a bathroom. So they can shower, they can go to the bathroom and then being able to get through a doorway. So if you can accommodate that in a house and put a ramp um, or, you know, a stair lift, um, then somebody can live there safely. But 10% of our nation's housing units means you got to come out of pocket with money because the insurance company is not paying for it. I wonder how much how much of our architectures ranch homes, which are homes that you're describing on one floor, roll mm -hmm. right in, and and mm -hmm. if it's built after 1978, it's going to have wide enough. Um, you're saying no doors? No, are, you say wide enough doors? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Well, wheelchairs so require wheelchairs require yeah. right. So there's a lot of requirements. However, the ranch style homes are actually better. Doorways are a little bit smaller. However, we have great hinges that allow for the expansion of a doorway, which is great because typically it's as you go through, you hit it on the door coming through. Um, and you just take the 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 um, molding off. But no, I've noticed ranch uh, style homes are great. Yeah, I've, no I've noticed in the last 10 years or so, more and more people, because I sell new construction, they're looking for the elevator. Where do we put an elevator? We need an elevator. So now, even though we don't necessarily install an elevator, we frame somewhere, you know, a couple of closets, yeah. uh, upstairs, downstairs, where, mm -hmm. you know, it's an That's option, where it doesn't have to be I've sticking out in the middle of the no. Or so <laughs> I've done this actually in um, a home in Agora um, and I've done it in another home, but we put an elevator. So as you go into the entryway, you know, typically there's a closet in most of the homes that I've, that I work in, in Los Angeles, we have, you know, it's a typical entryway closet right in front of you. That closet goes upstairs to an upstairs closet and we put in like a, an elevator in there. But it is hard. You got to frame it. You got to build it out. It's not easy. Right. It is sense. Yeah. I um, mean, it's mainly and, the framing. And and we have basements. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know it's, yeah. It's typical. Um, I know in Florida, yeah. the first thing I asked when I went into a house there when I was new, where, where's where's the basement? You know, <laughs> how do I get to the basement? And we, yeah. You learn Texas, quickly. California. There's like <laughs> one basement in the entire <laughs> right. state of Florida. Yeah. And it wasn't and, in that house. In Los Angeles, we don't have basements. Right. Texas, basements. Texas, there's no basements. Um, yeah. So, yeah. and you, and you it, probably it, could. Right, but the but the bottom line is, ten percent of the nation's housing units can actually accommodate. Doesn't matter where you live. You could be in Texas. You could be in Massachusetts. You could be in California, Florida. That's a huge, huge number that's going to hit, especially the pocketbook. Um, and that's the hardest part is affordability. And I think going back to your comment about that, those Heckam loans, and it doesn't end well, you know, here's the three things that homeowners are supposed to do in order to not lose their house. And it's keep insurance, make sure the taxes are paid, HOA, you know, the upkeep and stuff. But as far as paying off a loan, the loan doesn't get paid off until they pass. The heirs could pay, pay it off or you know, or not, but it's hard. It's hard to navigate that, especially when you have the income coming in and you can't work. And well, then what? you got medical bills on top of that. So if only 10% of the houses are going to accommodate disabilities in the whole mm -hmm. country, mm -hmm. how many houses or homes do we need right now? And how many more will we need in the future? I mean, what, what's Ooh. the shortfall here? It seems like an amazing opportunity that uh, I, I, should be I taken don't advantage know. of by somebody. So here's what I'll tell you, Jim. I um, 
this is an issue that we have behind the scenes um, with our National Aging in Place Council and our National Association of Home Builders. We are trying to lobby for laws that, and as you know, laws when it comes to construction and building are done by city, county, every state has its own. So you can't make a blanket moratorium across every country, every state to do this. But we need to have some sort of regulation where you have backing blockers, it, like um, in order to put, <laughs> in order to put grab bars, you just need some blocking. It's very cheap. It's very easy. If we could mandate all the um, builders that are building right now just to put that blocking in, it would save a homeowner and it's so the, much money. It's literally the scrap wood that they throw away. Exactly. Exactly. Do you, see how the frustrating part? So. When you look at the back end, I don't know because builders aren't doing that. Um, well, they don't, some, some are. They don't, I mean, but, some are, but, but not, you'd be surprised. They're not making a big deal about it, saying that we do yeah. this. And we, like, I, I do mention that it's framed for an optional elevator. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it's definitely a need for it. Yeah. Maybe I should have mentioned blocking. As, as a, a, you know, for grabbers, but especially like everything has to do with easy transitions between rooms, getting in and out of a shower, but make not making it look so, you know, like hospital grade. If you, people were to take uh, this, I'm doing a, a podcast actually for our bath um, and home show. And one of the things I talk about is the design. Like we're not designing things pretty especially when you go into a multi-million dollar home, which are the homes that I typically deal with in Los Angeles. And if you're going to just throw in grab bars and, and, and make it look very sterile and put in, you know, a, a like a, 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 a walk-in shower, but it's like a prefab one in a multi-million dollar house, it's cold. It doesn't look good. But well, it stands could, out too. Yeah, you could. And I, this is where I'm talking is the resale value. If you went in and just made it nice looking and put a textured type wall with a flat surface to kind of give it variation and you get the lighting variation because um, lighting is a big issue and, and coloring is a big issue as you get older. Um, there, if you go into any spa and you just recreate a nice spa that they're all ADA compliant to into somebody's home and make it this small instead of this big, Imagine the resale value on something that it, it would boost it and not of, know, and you wouldn't know somebody in a wheelchair was taking a shower. In it. Let's talk about other countries. I mean, EXP is in mm. two dozen countries. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I run a, a group where closing in on 700 agents now and nine countries. And they're always promoting, you know, there's a guy now, Costa Rica. We're not even in Costa Rica. And he's like so lighting up everything. Port, Portugal, number one, yeah. Yeah. you know. So are I, they doing a better job for the disabled and so the retirees? It's really, it's really interesting that you ask that because I've actually had our head broker from Portugal come on to EXP Seniors Network to talk about the senior communities. I've brought in, we've had the broker from Mexico. We've had the broker from, I've had a couple of, the, the head the head brokers of the country, of whatever country it was, they've come in and they've talked about expat living because that's a big thing. We'll go back to affordability in the United States. It's a little more expensive than it is, let's say, in Portugal or in some, you know, in some other country, Mexico. We get a lot of expats. So educating, again, our agents on our other countries and their senior living is very important. Mexico has a great um, has a great uh, 55 plus communities that are going on. They're constantly posting stuff that's for sale within EXP Seniors Network, which is really fun. Um, Portugal's get starting to get um, their, their um, senior communities of um, of um, younger generations now take, it's like, it kind of reminds me of a multi-family kind of living, but on a city level. So it's kind of interesting to see the younger taking care of the older. And we're finding different variations in all the countries that we're in, but also taking a look at countries that we're not in. I mean, you know, you've got a problem in China. You've got 
you know, they made it. So you had one child for two parents. Yeah, now you've got probably both. not the best example. No, but I'm just saying is that you need to look at like what we're doing and how we're going to change it and who's doing what. Because we Maybe don't Thailand. Really want that. If you want to look at Asia, <laughs> just, yeah. Vietnam, I just don't want, Thailand. I don't, yeah, I don't want to end up in a, a, in a problem where we don't have enough younger generation taking care of our older generation. Um, and I will tell you that for the first time in U.S. history, by 2034, we'll have more people over the age of 65 than under the age of 18. And that's never happened. So why is yeah. that? Birth rates are down and people are living longer. Um, well, it was the massive Two boom that we had, and we just never had both of them together. Um, and we're living longer. We're living, we're living so much longer now. Yeah, it's like the news in like some countries like Japan, they're they're basically saying they're gonna, I don't know, go bankrupt because they're not gonna mm -hmm. be able to afford to yeah. keep the older people alive because the younger people aren't having kids and they're not getting married and yeah. Under the yeah. social I'm security telling you, issue. It's, yeah. yeah. So I just, to me, you guys asked me about myself. I love to educate and empower all of our agents that want to work with this demographics. That's what I do. I oh, bring all it, the education. It seems like I an amazing it. opportunity. It is. It is. It's fun. I've, I've been having so much fun with it. Um, so when you're selling yeah. these people's houses that have been there for mm -hmm. 50 years, are you helping them find something else also? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's the part that I also work or work through or agents with. And I tell them, I said, if you have connections in your community, it could be an assisted living community. It could be a memory care community, anywhere that somebody would need to move to. You can actually get a referral fee for it. Because you're filling a bed in their community. So you can work out stuff, whether it's a board and care. I mean, there's there's so many variations. Step up plans, 55 plus communities. You know, there's, there's just a ton of options out there. And there's, <laughs> there's granny flats. There's other, there's so many things. There's ways to get referral fees. And even though you may not be helping them buy something, you could get a referral fee for putting them and placing them somewhere. So you have to know the needs of the client. I Like I said, it goes back to the niche of this demographics. It's not like a three-touch, like a typical um, experience that real estate agents go through. It's hand-holding. It's a first-time home seller. They are selling their home with document documents that are this thick. And when they bought it, it was three pages and like, you know, that was it. And now throw on inspections and well, you contingencies. Have to, uh, you have to help them downsize. Get rid yes. of 50 years of right. clutter. It's called the right sizing. <laughs> now, it's just, it's, 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 it sounds nicer. We're right Horrifying sizing. Horrifying is what it is. 50 years. It's hard. Um, but there are, there's the national senior move managers out there. Um, I, there's a database that if you work with the older homeowners, there's a database that you really, you need, a, you know, a move manager that deals with seniors. You need an estate sale that somebody that can liquidate because you may be going from a 5,000 square foot house to an 800 square foot, you know, units or, you know, something. And what's great is when you partner with one of these people, they will take pictures of this person's home that they just came from and they'll mimic it in the new home they're in. So it's not so overwhelming. Yeah. The bedroom, certainly for sure. Yeah. 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 It gets hard emotionally and mentally. It's, it's sure. so difficult. Sure. Um, especially if cognitively they get it. Um, but it, it's a very specific niche. I, and again, I'll go back to, it's fun. Yeah. It you got to be a little bit of a therapist, a counselor. I mean, we're yeah. all counselors, but this is, <laughs> this is next I, level. Yeah. Yeah. I had my 34th reunion, uh, not reunion anniversary recently. And I asked my wife, we've been to many, many places, really enjoyed them. All of them. I said, what do you want to do this year? She said, 
I want a dumpster and a weekend, meaning she uh-huh. wanted me to rent yeah. a dumpster and we spent the weekend throwing crap out. And it was so um, uplifting because we don't need any of that crap anymore. You know, it's long gone and our son won't have to deal with it. Yeah. Would it, you felt relief, I take it, when you did that. But are you looking at other things and say, I should have gotten rid of that and I should have gotten rid of oh, that? Oh, yeah. We, we, we have another dumpster on the way this summer. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Hey, you Go gather ahead. a lot. So, you gather a lot of stuff in thirty years in the house, you, and you don't realize it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. You've been in the business 30, 30 years, right? 30 so years. I have been. Yes, I have been in real estate. Um, I actually grew up in real estate. My sisters in real estate. My parents owned properties, so we kind of at the kitchen table during dinner talked real estate. Um, and so I managed our family properties for many, many years. And then I got my real estate license and I made it official <laughs> about and, 12, and you 10 years ago or so. Before EXP somewhere else? Mm-hmm. Boutique, a little small boutique brokerage. Um, so and what would you say I, the difference is between, how, how long have you been with EXP now? Um, six years. Okay. I was, so before I was, EXP, oh. at EXP, and as EXP changes That's every cool. day and every year, oh, what do you, what do you see like the changes in the way even your brain works when it comes um, to the business? So here's what I'll tell you. Uh, my first brokerage that I was at, like I said, it was boutique. It was myself and a couple other agents and it just, it didn't um, feel, I didn't feel that I was getting, like I was able to participate in things extracurricular, if that made sense. I can't explain it, but I just felt like I needed more Um, or I needed to do more with a brokerage. It had nothing to do with the brokerage I was with. It was just me. Um, Fewer opportunities. Correct. I, and I wanted more, um, but I don't want a uh, big box, I should say. I think we lost Jim. <laughs> um, I happens. didn't want big box. I, I'm, I'm, I'm back. I, I'm Sorry. Back. I didn't want big box. But the bottom line was Tech, I came into EXP and I have loved every moment of growth. I have loved every moment of my growth of what I needed. Um, and I... I it's not for everybody. And I say that to people, however, er, you make it what it is. And if you want something, then you find so who, who the process so easily. We've heard this before. So I'll tell you who it's not for. It's for those people that just aren't in real estate. They just, you know, they don't have it in them to be in real estate. It just isn't. If you're a person that needs hand holding uh, face to face, I'm sure you can get it somewhere, but Sometimes, and I've heard it from many agents, they don't get the hand holding and the babying that they need through everything. Maybe it's every part of a deal. Maybe it's every little bit. It could be the mentor. It could be this. It could be that. I don't know. But I find it's the agent's disposition (laughs) that doesn't make it and not the company. That's just me. And like I said, that small brokerage I was with, why it didn't work for me and why I needed something. It's the same thing of somebody needing something and it not being at this brokerage for them, you know, and maybe something boutique brokerage would work for someone like that. So um, that's what I thought is um, as far as growth, we have grown drastically and I have loved every minute of it. I have felt like a part of a team, um, but I love being part of a team and that's just my personality. Um, and I love being a part of something bigger. And yeah. so I stay. Yeah. yeah, the business model is cool. The tech is cool. But the talent yeah. that's being drawn to it now, you know, there's some real rock stars that are really yeah. pushing pushing the envelope to the next level. And, and, and the company is set up to allow for it. That's the nice Yes, thing. that's the best part. That has always been something I have been looking forward to. And I, I sit on our one, like in our one XP affinity groups for the last several years, I've watched 
things change behind the scenes and I love it. I've loved watching them tweak things because they, they listen to us. If something's not working for us, they're going to hear us and they're, it's going to get tweaked some way. Maybe not at that moment, but I can assure you it's going to be tweaked at some point and, you know, soon. So being at a big box company and having that voice is nice because you can't get that at. It's, it's know, basically the biggest box at this point. It's one yes. huge <laughs> box. Whoa. Yeah. It's big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I got to, I, I mean, having that freedom to really define yourself within our company is also a big thing. It's um, for the entrepreneur. And, and you know, what I find is when I work with other brokerages offices in Los Angeles, you can tell there's that one team and that team only, and that's all that's in that office. And it's, to me, I'm like, there's like a thousand other kids in that office. Like, why is it only that one team? So I like what we have and I like the people that come in and the people that are staying. Um, there's always bad apples in every bunch, toss them out, they leave. But the people that stay, that's, you know, it's, we're in it for the long haul and we just enjoy what we do. That's where I'm at. And we never got to speak about pickleball today. Darn. Oh. I had so many pickleball questions. <laughs> Well, let me just, just tell just you, saying, I, went... I, I, I was talking to Heather this morning. <laughs> she was in pickleball. I you, went you to told this me. pickleball yeah. slam. I, I can't okay. wait I to, went to the... play my first pickleball game. Yes. Someday. Well, that's another great way to meet uh, older adults. But you're adults in Florida. Tomorrow. That's like probably <laughs> ground zero for pickleball, right? Uh, or ma <laughs> yes. <or> mahjong. <laughs> I, I don't think they have. Do we even have pickleball in Massachusetts? Anywhere? Oh, absolutely. Yes, you, absolutely. You do. You do. I'm, I'm indoor glad. courts. Okay. Yeah. You have indoor courts. You got a lot of indoor, mm -hmm. um, but that's a great way to meet older adult homeowners. Just saying, <laughs> great way to meet them. So um, Heather, yeah, how do people in get in touch with you? So you can workplace um, Heather Brooks, um, or you can Heather Brooks, R E at gmail.com. I also have a YouTube channel. It's customized aging and I have tons of videos. It, um, is real estate agents can go check it out. We've got all in, all the information of all the classes that we've done in EXP Seniors Network. We do record and we have them on YouTube. I've brought in the um, heads of the National Aging in Place Council, the National Senior Move Managers of most of our national senior organizations to talk. So those are on there. Um, if you want to know where to find a senior homeowner in your area, you can find that video on there. So it's a lot. All the educational videos are on there, too. Like customized aging. Cool. Thank you so yeah. much, Heather. It's a great show. I really appreciate you coming Thank on you. the show. Thank you so much. Uh, You're join welcome. Us next week for another great Exponential Files. TheExponentialFiles.com if you want to check us out. Like us, follow us, all that good stuff. Thank you, Heather Brooks.